Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihil karim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin amma ba'd. My dear respected guest, my dear brothers and sisters, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this lecture entitled uh, the understanding the combination of contracts in Islamic banking products. Today's uh, our guest speaker is Dr. Uh, Muhammad Habibur Rahman, who is a senior lecturer in the University of Sultan Zainal Abidin, Malaysia. So this is uh, a part of our uh, series of lectures that we uh, usually conduct every week on Thursday uh, under the umbrella of Islamic Economics Association, now the Liptas of the Islami, uh, Kuwait University. As now the Liptas of the Islami is trying to promote Sharia compliant finance models and standards and theories uh, through conducting lectures, talks, forums, and trainings. And we are trying to uh, cover a wide range of areas of Islamic banking and finance. And also we are uh, trying to arrange some lectures and talks on the topics, specific topics uh, with the current and contemporary issues, uh, including sukuk, uh, retail, corporate banking products, practices, contemporary issues like uh, debt management and uh, finance uh, management. Uh, so this is uh, what we are trying to promote is Sharia compliant models around the globe. And now the Lictus Saudi Islami uh, now has become a global platform. And uh, it, it's also bringing uh, international experts, scholars, professors, uh, who are very well-known experts in this field of Islamic banking and finance. So a part of that uh, today's lecture, uh, we uh, understanding the combination of contracts uh, in Islamic banking products. And we, we are very much happy and honored to have Dr. Muhammad Habibur Rahman today uh, with us to deliver this uh, lecture. Uh, Dr. Habib has been conferred a PhD in Fiqh Mu'amala by the International Islamic University in Malaysia, and also a chartered Islamic finance professional, having around 10 years of learning, uh, teaching, and research ex experiences in Islamic finance and Sharia. Besides, he obtained a bachelor's degree in Sharia Islamic law from Al-Azhar University, Egypt. And currently, uh, Dr. Habib serves as a senior lecturer, assistant professor of Islamic finance and Sharia in the Faculty of Business and Management, University uh, Sultan Zainal Abidin, Malaysia. Prior to this, uh, he served as the uh, assistant professor at the International University of Agadir, Morocco. And he is serving as well as a trainer uh, for postgraduate diploma in Islamic finance practices at the Academy of Business Professionals, uh, Bangladesh. So uh, this is uh, my pleasure to welcome Dr. Habib to uh, conduct today's lecture on understanding the combination of contracts in Islamic banking products. Uh, please welcome Dr. Habib. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Mohaiddin, Barakallahu Fikum. Thank you also, Dr. Nadil Akhtisad al Islami, for these wonderful initiatives and for kind invitation. So it's a very pleasure, pleasure for me also to come here and to share some thoughts on Islamic banking and finance. So I'm very much happy also to be here with you all, inshallah. So um, let me share my screen. All right. 
Is it visible, Dr. Mahirdin? Yes, Doctor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Him. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Nabi Alameen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'id. Respected moderator and uh, respected audience, uh, students, researchers, professors, doctors, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And very much welcome uh, to this session. And thank you very much also for being with us in this session. Uh, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the session beneficial for us so that we can get some insight, uh, we can share something uh, which will be beneficial for us, in, inshallah. So um, today's uh, topic, today we will discuss on an issue which is, which is very much common in Islamic banking, actually Islamic finance practices, which is combination of multiple contracts. Uh, combination of multiple contracts in Islamic banking products. So, um, actually, as, as you all know that uh, when it comes to, the, to making the difference between uh, making a clear difference between Islamic and conventional practice, then um, we can answer that one of the main differences is for Islamic banking, uh, whether it is products or services, it must be designed based on any Sharia contract, right? They should have an underlying contract. While in conventional, they have only one thing, which is lending and borrowing arrangement, right? Uh, whether it is product or service or whatsoever, um, I think they don't have any other contract. But for Islamic, there should not be any lending and borrowing contract at all, right? There must have um, any Sharia compliant contract uh, as a foundation for to offering the products and services. So uh, I believe we all know that uh, there are many types of products uh, contracts in Islamic uh, commercial law. It can be sale based, right? It can be a lease. It can be partnership. It can be service contracts like wakala, kafala, juala, and so on. However, sometimes it happens that one single contract may not be enough to design a complete product, right? Maybe one single product um, um, could be insufficient to capture the demand of the customer, even also the demand of the uh, banks itself. That's why it must need to combine uh, more than one contracts under one umbrella or to design one single product, right? So this is called combination of multiple contracts, al-jam'u bayn al right? So what is the combination of multiple contracts? This is a combination of more than one contracts to design one single product, right? For example, for example, we have diminishing partnership, Musharaka Mutanaqisa. So in Musharaka Mutanaqisa or diminishing partnership, it is start with partnership, Musharaka. Then there will be Ijara. There will be sometimes niche Wakala as well, right? Uh, for uh, higher purchase financial Ijara, it is start with Ijara. And then it needs another contract to transfer the ownership of the asset, and so on. Even in Sukuk also, right? Nowadays, even the hybrid Sukuk is getting familiar because one single uh, contract uh, may not be enough always to, to meet the demand of the customer and the demand of the supplier as well. So this, this concept or this idea is referred to combination of contracts or combination of multiple contracts, or combination of more than one contracts, all right? Now, AOFI also discussed this issue in its Sharia standard um, 25, I think, yes, SS25, AOFI also covered this issue 
combination of contracts. So in this standard AOP um, discuss um, their combination can be done either as a condition in the contract, right? It can be done imposing as a condition, clearly mentioned in the agreement, right? Or it can be done without mentioning in the contract by prior agreement, right? Al ittifaq ma qabl al aqad, or it is called muwata'a, right? Prior agreement. So the combination, this combination of contracts may take any of the following forms. It can be uh, without imposing the as a condition and also without muata'a, right? Uh, automatically or by default, it happens. There was no prior agreement, right? And also it has not been mentioned in the contract or in the documentation. Okay, so this could be one scenario, that combination without imposing the condition and also without prior agreement, right? Combination, second one, combination while imposing some of them as condition in others without prior agreement. So the second will be, it is clearly mentioned in the contract as a condition, right? imposing some of them as condition but of course there is no prior agreement eh? there is no muata before that so it is clearly mentioned in the contract okay? so this will be considered as as a condition in the contract okay? third scenario could be combination with prior agreement so they already settled this one before the by contracting parties and they didn't mention in the agreement itself they didn't mention but it is there in their um, verbal agreement not in the written documentation so combination can come with prior agreement only but without imposing any condition All right or another scenario could be that uh, putting something as condition or uh, whatever and that will be finally decided in the future okay maybe we'll contract uh, we'll do contract now and in future we may think to change or to put another condition or to put another things in the agreement okay so um, we have to understand uh, two things here whether this combination can be as muata we discuss later on on this prior agreement or it could be mentioned as a condition in the contract. Then it will be dealt or it will be discussed under the chapter of Ashurut uh, Filokut or conditions in the contract. All right. So if combination, multiple contracts, multiple issues is mentioned as a clause, as a condition in the contract, then it will discuss under the chapter of uh, condition of the contract and a scholar has many opinion on that. Some condition can be relevant to the contract, some condition may not be. Uh, it depends on the nature of the condition itself. Okay. And then another point is prior agreement. Uh, this will be discussed further. Okay. Okay. Um, there could have some forms of combination when the combination has been done. Combined contract may have a single lump sum counter value. For example, combining two products or two items in one price. I am selling you my house and my land with this amount. So this could be a form of combination because I combine two items in one, one contract, right? I'm selling my house and I'm selling my land but there is one single lump sum counter value. So the price will be one, but the subject matter would be more than one and it is mentioned together. Okay, so uh, if this is the form of combination, then there will be no issue yeah, as we will discuss in the coming uh, pages. So there will be no issue from uh, as far as Sharia is concerned, all right? 
combined contracts may be concluded for separate values. Uh, let's say, if I say I'm selling um, the house and the land with two prices. Okay, so the two prices, if it is separately mentioned, this price is for this land, this price is for the house. So this combination also uh, apparently no issue. It's okay. Okay. Some of the combined contracts may be stipulated as condition in the other contracts. So the combined contracts may come uh, as a form of condition. For example, I am selling you my house provided you sell me your land. All right. So here, uh, two things has been combined in one contract. Okay. So this will be subject to the discussion on contracts stipulated in the contract. Okay. So if um, it is another long discussion on this, okay. Number four is combined contract may take the form of an exhaustive contractual statement comprising a number of successive parts and stages. As been practicing in Islamic financial products, uh, let's say uh, in the whole, in the one single product, there are many stages. And in every stages, they use a different contract, right? For example, first stage uh, use the Musharaka, second stage use the Ijara, uh, third stage Wakala or before that Wakala. So uh, the ruling for this one is, is okay, permissible, as long as the whole things, there is no contradiction, there is no conflict with Sharia principles. And all the contracts itself permissible. And then all the contracts are like that, they can come together. Because there are contracts that they cannot come together. They are contradictory with each other. So if the contracts itself contradictory, then it cannot be combined. But if the contracts itself are consistent right, with each other and they, are, and they do not conflict with each other, then it can be combined together. Okay. So these are uh, some uh, basic uh, things, basic points or basic um, thoughts on combination of the contracts. Huh? What does it mean and how it looks like? Okay. How it looks like. Now, what is the issue? Why uh, we are concerned? I mean, uh, why, uh, as far as Islam or Sharia uh, is concerned, why it is a concern? Why it is an issue? Because there are few, or I could say three. Uh, I, I quoted here three. There are um, three prophetic narrations or hadith uh, that actually. Um, what I say, prohibit or forbid or do not allow the combination of two contracts in a single agreement, right? For example, um, as reported in many sources, in many books, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited two cells in one cell, right? Bayatani fi baya. Bayatani fi baya, two cells in one cell. Or in another narration, it comes safqatani fi safqa. So naha an safqataini fi safqa. The Prophet prohibits or forbids uh, the combination of two agreements in one agreement. Okay. Another third hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu prohibit naha an bayin wa salafin. Combination of sale and loan. So the Prophet prohibited the combination of sale and loan in a single agreement. All right. So here is our concern. We have to investigate whether this practice of combination in, in Islamic banking products, is it contradictory with this hadith? Or is it, uh, it does not violate the message of the hadith. Now we have to understand the meaning of the hadith and we have to investigate from these meanings whether the current practice of combination in Islamic banking products it contradicts with this hadith or not. 
Okay, so uh, three hadith by Atan fi by Ar, Safkata nafi Safka, and by Ain Wasalafin, prohibition of sale and loan. Okay, so we will discuss further these three hadiths, the meaning of these three hadiths, and we will see whether the current practice uh, contradict with this hadith or not. Right? Okay. So actually, there should not be any issue uh, uh, to combine more than one contract in one set. Right? Uh, because as we know in Muamalat, everything is permissible unless otherwise it's proven. Right? Allah's to fill Muamalat, Alibah. Right? So from this principle, the, the, the honest combination or pure combination of more than one contract in one set is permissible without imposing one contract as a condition in the other. If the contract uh, does not come as a form of condition, as a form of short for another contract. For example, I sell you my house with the condition that you sell me your land or you sell me your car. Right? So in this form, the two contracts, but it comes as a conditional form, right? As a conditional form. So this is not the honest combination. This is not the innocent combination, right? Because it comes as a condition. So it will go under the discussion of the uh, condition in the contract, right? But if you if if the combination is like that, okay, I'm selling my house and land with this price or my house and land with this and that price. So it is clear. It is an innocent combination. So uh, from the general principle perspective, it is okay, it's permissible, MOBA. Right? But provided that each contract is permissible on its own. Of course, we are talking about the Sharia permissible contract. So uh, we are not talking about any illegal contract. So every for example uh, sale and lease uh, or sale and partnership these are the sharia compliant contract permissible so if the contracts itself are permissible then they can combine uh, they can be combined uh, innocently uh, innocently means without imposing one contract as a condition okay so this is acceptable this is permissible so the basic ruling with the basic means with the basic meanings, huh? with the basic concept, the basic ruling is Ibaha. Combining contract in this manner is acceptable unless it encounter a Sharia restriction that entails its prohibition on exceptional basis. So as I said, Allah uh, fil Ibaha, as long as there is no um, violation of Sharia. All right, so combination, it shall be subject to the nature and essence of the contract. A combination of partnership with the lease contract is not prohibited as both contracts are not consistent with each other, not inconsistent. So it means when we combine the contracts, the contracts itself shall be mutatabikan, shall be consistent with each other, shall not be contradictory itself. For example, uh, sale and donation. I am selling you with this price, but I am saying I am donating you. It is contradictory, right? Because donation should be free, sale should be with return. So the condition in the combination is it shall not be contradictory. All right? For example, partnership with lease. Let's say in just now mentioned Musharaka Mutanakisa they can be combined because they are not inconsistent. Means they are consistent. They can be come together. So this combination is okay, it's fine. However, combination of a loan contract with another contract that brings some benefit for the loan is not permissible because this combination converts the arrangement into a uh, rebawi transactions transaction 
For example, the Prophet just now prohibit sale and loan, uh, buy and was sell of So I am giving you this the loan with the condition that you have to sell me your house with this price. So the price I quote will be less than the actual price. So I am asking a benefit of a reduction in the price in return for the loan I am offering you. Okay, so this combination is not permissible because this combination is actually a violation of the Sharia principle. Because I am combining loan and some other contract that brings the benefit for the loan. Right, so we know the Sharia principles, uh, the legal maxim, that any loan that brings the benefit cannot be permissible. So I'm giving you the loan. At the same time, I am asking you to purchase your home with a cheaper price. But without loan, actually, you will not sell this price with that amount. Uh, you will not sell your house with that price. So because this combination brings a benefit for the loan, so this combination cannot be permissible. That's why we have to understand that uh, we cannot jump to the hadith. Eh? Just now I mentioned three hadith. We cannot jump that, okay, as far as the hadith are concerned, combination cannot be allowed. It's not permissible. No. The basic ruling combination is permissible, but we have to see the nature of the contracts that are going to be combined. If the contracts are consistent and the combination itself also is not violating, means after combining, there will be, there is no violation, then it's okay. But if the contracts itself are not contradictory, uh, are not consistent, and after combination, the final outcome also um, a violation of Sharia. For example, like this one combination of loan and sale, uh, which ultimately brings some benefit for the loan. So this combination cannot be uh, allowed. So the ruling is subjective, right? Subjective to the nature of the, to the nature and outcome of the combination. All right. So what is the meaning of the hadith then? Because the hadith clearly mentioned it is not allowed, right? Naha and by Altaini Fibaya, Naha and Safkataini Fisafka, Naha and by Yang one Salafin. So hadith didn't make any difference. Hadith said no combination at all, apparently, right? Zohiran. But we have seen that this is the uh, discussion. So what is the meaning of hadith? What does hadith mean actually? What does this prophetic narration mean? So, um, making uh, the, the meaning of Safkatan Fi Safka, actually, uh, Safkatan Fi Safka and Bayatan Fi Baya refer to the same connotation, same meaning. So, what is the meaning? Let's read what our scholar says. Okay. Uh, for example, scholar said, uh, Safkatan Fi Safka is not permissible. Like what? For example, one says this item is for such on credit and for such amount on cash. Okay, it means uh, we in the same sentence, in the in a single sentence or in a single ad, uh, offer, you are making actually two offer. The, the price of this item is ten dollars on cash and fifty dollars, for example, on credit. So. If simply the, the purchaser say, I okay, I am accepted. So it, it brings the error uncertainty because he has to clarify he accepted which one because there are actually two offers. One offer for as a crash cash price, another offer as a credit price. So which one? Okay, I accepted the second one, credit price. Okay, I accepted the first one. He has to clarify. Otherwise, it will uh, it will um, bring some uncertainty. So it refers to the hadith, safakatan fi safka or bayatan fi bayat, because he is making two offer 
uh, in a single agreement okay so it means this is for you ten dollars on cash right and twenty dollars on credit okay so this is the same meaning also uh, referred to by Adhan Efi Bayar because uh, in some, uh, for example, Imam al Nasai, when he mentioned the chapter name as by Adhan Efi Bayar, and under this chapter, he mentioned the hadith of Qatan Efi Safqat. So it means the same, both refers to the same meaning. So what is the meaning? As, as Imam al Nasai mentioned, I have sold you these goods with 100 dirham on cash and 200 dirham on credit. So Ibn Hibban also mentioned the same. As he said, there is prohibition from the sale. When the seller says, I have sold you this commodity with 100 dirham or 100 dinar on credit and 90 dinars on cash. Okay. So this is one meaning we found from the scholars regarding the hadith. Uh, safqata nefi safqa or bayata nefi bayar. What is the meaning? Making two offers with different prices in one arrangement. Okay. Because if um, the, the purchaser, the, the buyer accept generally without identifying which one, then it could uh, constitute the order. Okay. Okay, in case of two identified offer are made, the lesser price for the longest term would be considered. For example, uh, Imam al is asking, uh, he was asked if the contract is concluded with these two conditions, what would be done? Let's say the buyer said, I accept it. That's it. Then you accepted which one? If he didn't mention clearly, then it will be uh, understood as concluded with the smaller price for the longest term. Because otherwise it would be similar to the riba. Otherwise it would be similar to riba. So regarding this hadith, Sufyan Asauri says, if the seller finds the goods, he should return it. And if it is destroyed, he would get the lesser price for longest term. So in this case, if he, if he claims the, uh, the um, higher price or credit price, then it could uh, lead to consume riba. Okay. That's why this sort of combination which refer or which may constitute garar, uncertainty, uh, this combination cannot be allowed because the outcome of the condition itself con in, uh, contains the garar. And we know Garar is a prohibited element in financial contract. All right, so this is uh, one meaning of the Hadith. Second meaning, um, making offer with one currency and receiving payment with another currency. Some scholars say this also could be the meaning of the Hadith. Two agreements in one agreement means Someone says, I sold you this dress with one gold currency, provided you pay 10 silver currency. So put like that, as you see in the contract itself. Okay, our market price is $10, but never mind, you can pay me, for example, 50 ringgits. Okay, so even though let's say $10 uh, equal to 40 ringgits, all uh, 40 ringgit plus, but he might ask 50 ringgit so to get some extra, to get some extra benefit. Okay, so it means here he is selling also at the same time he is uh, doing the currency exchange. So this, this could be also another meaning for this hadith. Safkatan uh, fi safka means. Uh, making offer with one currency but receiving payment with the other currency. But we have to again, we have to put in our mind whether it comes as a condition or as a muata or without anything. If let's say there is no prior agreement, uh, there is no precondition, there is no condition also, just 
the contract is done on the dollar but after that suddenly the sellers the buyer said okay sorry i don't have dollar i have another currency so can i pay with that the seller say okay you can so this is innocent right this is no issue but the issue will appear when it comes as a condition for example i sold you this dress provided that this provided means this is a condition so it comes uh, with a conditional form okay that's why it, it, it becomes an issue all right so uh by atani fi baya also actually uh the same meaning a scholar explained the hadith as same as the hadith of safka tanifi safka so both actually refer to the same connotation as you have seen imam tirmizi he also mentioned after this hadith that for example i have sold you this cloth with 10 on cash and 20 on credit and the contracting parties do not confirm any of this to offer so this is invalid because if contract is concluded without confirming any offer the price becomes unknown so when the price becomes unknown this induces dispute and invalidates the contract so this is the same meaning we mentioned in safkatane fi safka so by atane fi baya in safkatane fi safka refer actually um, to uh, to make few offers in one agreement uh, in which actually or ultimately it happens that the price becomes unidentified and unknown okay so we can get the meaning that our current practice of combination if the outcome of the combination uh, happens like that that the price becomes or the outcome of the contract becomes unidentified and unknown then such combination we can say uh, it will not be allowed it should not be allowed okay so the point here um, we have to also see the outcome of the combination okay the outcome of the combination uh, ashaukani uh, imam ashaukani also explained the same is actually making two unidentified offer in one arrangement with two different prices for cash and deferred payment okay imam ashafi also says the same so uh, we can uh, say that the meaning of these two hadiths are actually the same. Is actually making uh, more than one offers in one agreement, right? Where the price becomes unknown and unidentified, and this could lead to dispute, and accordingly, the contracts becomes invalid. All right. Okay. What about the third hadith? Uh, sell and loan or buy wasalaf eh? the provision of naha and buying wasalafing what does it mean imam ahmad says it means to lend someone an amount and then to sell him an asset with a price higher than the normal rate okay so it is very clear um, the, the explanation of our scholar is very clear it means this is actually a, um, what you call using a legal trick, hmm? a hila, hila al mazmuma. Right? Hila, the word hila itself connotes the negative connotation, right? It's negative connotation. So uh, the person is lending the amount, expecting that he can buy the asset. He can buy the asset of the borrower with a cheaper price, right? With a cheaper price. So he want to uh, enjoy some discount in the price in against of his loan. Okay. So this is an hila to consume riba to receive riba. That's why the prophet uh, um, prohibits combination of sale and loan. So we can conclude or we can uh, we can uh, get the meaning from here get the message that in our current practice also if any combination actually uh, the, the intention is somehow to consume riba hmm? 
to receive the riba. So if it becomes like a legal trick, like a hila, then such combination um, is not permissible. Not permissible. Okay. So this is uh, one interpretation, same from Imam Ahmed. Also, second meaning also, there is possibility to lend money by saying to the borrower, if you are not ready to pay back, then it would be considered sold. Okay. Um, let's say uh, somebody is lending uh, some money. Okay. Then said, okay, if you cannot uh, pay back, don't want to pay back, then it would be considered sold. So it means on the second meaning, this meaning, the contract becomes conditional between sale and loan. All right. So if you, um, if the borrower can pay back the loan, then it will be loan. If the borrower cannot pay back the loan, then it will be considered sold. So in this arrangement, a person gives the other an amount of money as loan and then takes an asset from him. Uh -huh. So uh, in return for the loan amount, he is actually taking an asset from the person saying that if you cannot pay back the money, your asset would be considered sold. Okay, so it means the asset that the lender has taken earlier will be considered exchange with the amount of loan. So actually the intention is getting the asset in return for the loan. Maybe the loan is uh, $1,000, but the asset could be for 1200 1500 so the intention is actually to get extra 500 in return for the loan but since cannot use the direct loan it will be clearly riba that's why they go for a hila what is the hila they used an asset and they said okay they said if you cannot pay the um, loan then the asset will be considered the sold. Okay, so this is uh, the the there are these two interpretation meanings for this hadith. Okay, Maha and Bayoin was Okay, well the first hadith is uh, clearly using as a legal trick. Okay, or oh, second uh, with the second interpretation is using an asset in between. So if the person cannot pay back the money, then the asset will be considered sold. So the intention is that is very clear. The meaning here is actually uh, to, to use any hila or a legal trick to consume the riba. So uh, our current practice of combination, if it appears like that, that uh, it could be like uh, hila, then it should not be allowed. Okay, it should not be permissible. All right. So based on the hadith, um, uh, if we we investigate and if we uh, see the scholars' opinion, uh, I think majority scholars say combining two cell in one cell with two different subject matters and two different prices is invalid. Okay, so majority says invalid. However, we we uh, found another opinion from. Maliki school and Ibn Taymiyyah of Hanbali schools that it is permissible to arrange two contracts in one contract with two different subject matter. So if one says I have sold you my slave with the condition that you sell me your slave with the same price, the agreement is permissible. Actually, um, there is no, um, what I call, there is no khilaf, no dispute among these two opinions. What is the uh, point of disagreement? The point of disagreement, whether the price is unidentified or not. If the price is uh, unknown and unidentified, then the contract is invalid. Everybody agrees. So if the price is identified, whether even though there is combination, but still the outcome is the price is known. I put many items in, in one agreement, that's fine. but ultimately 
I clearly mention what is the price of this item, what is the price of that item, what is the price of that item, so that the purchaser can purchase and the purchaser can clearly know which one the price for uh, which item. Okay. So majority says, uh, even all agrees, if the price, the outcome of combination is happens like that, the price becomes unknown, then the contract is invalid because it will lead, uh, it will bring dispute. It will bring dispute among the parties. Okay. If the Ilan Niza. But if the price is known, then all agree that the combination will be valid because as a layuf the Ilan Niza, there will be no dispute. All right. And what is the issue of sale and settlement with different currency? Sale and settlement of different currency, as we have seen, we got another meaning of the. Hadith by Atanifi Bayar, some scholar explained that it is actually selling with one currency and settling the price with another currency. All right. So uh, some scholars with the view that this arrangement is invalid because it is a combination of sale and currency exchange. While Imam Malik says, yeah, the seller does not intend for currency exchange. But he just firstly mentioned dinner and then replaces it with dirham. So again, we got different opinion from the scholars, right? Uh, Imam Ibn al-Arabi mentioned, since he denies the gold currency, the transaction will be concluded with silver currency. As if someone says, I have sold my land in exchange for your land, provided that you settle it with your house. So this is in fact an exchange of land with house. And that is permissible. Okay, so the how we can see this this uh, different opinion among the scholars. So uh, I I want to remind you to refer our earlier uh, basic principle, whether we have to see uh, whether it is actually put as a condition, or it comes as a prior agreement, or it is, uh, I mean, by default automatically happens. So let's say it is their condition, they put as a condition, then it will be under the chapter of condition in the contract. Let's say there is prior agreement that actually they are selling with dinner and they are asking to pay or to settle with their home. So this is actually purposely they did. So if they did it purposely, so then we have to follow the rules of currency exchange. All right. And if the currency rules of currency exchange uh, violated, then and if it violates the rules of currency exchange, then the arrangement will be invalid. However, if it happens just automatically, I mean, let's say the contract happens on gold, but gold dinner, but suddenly the person doesn't have the gold dinner, but he wants to pay with another currency. So there is no prior agreement, no muata, no shurut. Then it is fine. Then it is permissible. Okay, so this is how we can combine uh, the the different opinion among the scholars. All right. So I think uh, we got the the uh, message uh, that uh, how we have we can see the combination. Uh, the combination could be valid. The combination could be invalid. Yeah? So the basic principles is permissible if there is no violation. All right, if the combination comes uh, in, the, in the appearance of condition, then we have to investigate the rulings of condition. All right, and if the combination comes as a muata'a, then we have to see whether it is the hila or it is the maharaj, sharia exit. Okay, uh, all right. So there are some dawabit, uh, there are some um, sharia controls, we can say dawabit parameters. Uh, to to uh, to determine whether the combination is valid or invalid, permissible or not permissible. Okay, uh, the first one, combination should not include the cases that are prohibited in Sharia. Okay, uh, the scenario cannot be like that. That is clearly prohibited. For example, combining the sale and loan, this is clearly prohibited. So. 
it will not be allowed. Okay. The second uh, parameter, combination should not make the unlawful things lawful. As we have seen, if it becomes as a hila, as a trick, then it will not be permissible, right? Uh, our Shaykh scholar Ibn Qayyim also mentioned combination between loan and sale is prohibited because it leads to involve with riba by taking more than what one gives as loan. So using the sale or lease contract in disguise, eh? like backdoor riba. Eh? So uh, if the combination happens in such a way that uh, it makes the unlawful things lawful, then it will not be permissible. So the second parameter, second orbit is combination should not make the unlawful things lawful. Right? The third parameter, the two contracts or more should not be contradictory in form and conflicting in ruling means the contracts itself, they should be consistent. They should be consistent, not contradictory. For example, there are contracts that they cannot come together. Like um, scholars of Maliki school, they listed some contracts that are not allowed to be combined with the sale. For example, the Johala, the Sarf, right? Johala, Sarf, uh, Musaka, Shirka, Anika, eh, loan, and Kirat means seems all partnership contracts, Nika and loan, they cannot be combined with the sale contract because the nature of these contracts are conflicting. So that's why we have to see uh, when there is combination of multiple contracts and we have to see the contracts, whether they are contradictory or they are consistent. Okay. Uh, another uh, uh, parameter, this is uh, same like uh, second one, it cannot be an excuse for practicing riba. It cannot be an excuse for practicing riba. Okay. So these are the uh, parameters for uh, or parameters to determine whether we shall allow the combination or we shall stop the combination, okay? So actually, um, the, current, the current practice or the combination they're practicing in, in Islamic banking products, uh, in most cases, uh, they are permissible, huh? they are valid because they combine in such a way that the contracts itself are not contradictory and the outcome also itself does not violate the Sharia principle. Right. So um, now we discuss the uh, an issue of prior agreement, muata. Right. If let's say uh, the combination or is not mentioned in the documentation, hmm? is not appear uh, um, explicitly clearly, hmm? but there is an agreement. There is a muata agreement among the contracting parties. They will combine few things together. So this is actually uh, similar uh, with our previous discussion uh, that we have to see whether this combination is, uh, or this muata is actually for what? Is it, uh, uh, is it uh, as a hila to consume riba or is it uh, for a way out? We call it makhari, shoria exit. So if it is an hila, then it should not be allowed. But if it is a maharis to to avoid the riba, there is there are there is difference actually. Um, I mean, uh, try to try to have a different way to consume riba, and try to have a different way to avoid riba. So the first one we can uh, understand as hila, and they should not be allowed. The second one we can uh, say that actually to have an exit means try to practice in a Sharia compliant manner by avoiding the riba. So that is in Arabic called maharish, right? So I think there is no issue for to use the maharish, 
but there is issue, there is observation to use the hila. Okay. So this muata, uh, it can be clear, right? Uh, explicit or implicit intention of the parties to the contract to use a certain trick for practicing riba through a Sharia accepted contractual form. For example, they are using all Sharia contracts. Uh, they are combining here and there, but actually the ultimate intention is to enjoy or to consume riba. Okay. Uh, or it is an unrevealed agreement between two parties to perform a Sharia permissible act or deal for the sake of finding a Sharia accepted risk, a Sharia accepted exit. So this is accepted. This is Makharij, just now I mentioned. So, or coincidence of the intention. Okay, so if there is coincidence, then actually there is no issue. Yeah, the, the example just now I mentioned, uh, they actually settle with, uh, they, ag they agree with the dollar, but suddenly after that it appears that he doesn't have dollar, he has another currency. So the sellers say, okay, never mind, you can pay. So this is actually coincidence. So this is okay. Okay, so this will not fall under the notion of bayatan ki bayar or safkatan ki safka. However, if there is a clear intention that actually they want to have an agreement, uh, even though they are um, selling with the dollar somehow, but they want to pay with another currency. So this one, if it is um, uh, appears as an agreement that settled before, that happens before, but this one we have to see whether this one to as a hila or as a maharaj. Okay, so this is actually these three scenario. Uh, we can apply uh, when it comes to understand the combination of the contracts, multiple contracts. All right, uh, I think um, we uh, almost, uh, our time is almost going to finish. So uh, this is about Muata. So uh, this is the uh, summary just now I mentioned. Uh, Muata to form of riba tricks. This is not allowed, this is invalid. Hmm? But Muata for obtaining Sharia exit, this is permissible. Okay, so uh, what we can uh, understand from the discussion so far uh, with regarding the combination, this combination can, can come as coincidence, then no issue. This combination can come as a condition then we have to investigate the, and we have to see this one under the notion of condition in the contract. So if condition is consistent, then accept it. If condition is uh, according to the requirement of the contract, more uh, consistent with the requirement of the contract means muqtada al aqad then it is also okay. But if condition is contradictory, then uh, with the contract, then it is not okay. And if the combination comes with the notion of or uh, as a pair of muata, then we have to see whether this muata is coincidence or this muata is uh, as a hila or this muata is as a shori exit. Okay, if shori exit, that's permissible. Uh, as a hila, uh, of course, it is not permissible. Okay, and we have to, we also discuss, uh, we have to also understand the meaning of the hadith that is. Uh, that is actually uh, uh, provide the concern in this matter, right? Because the Prophet clearly prohibits combining two agreements in one agreement. What does it mean? Huh? We have discussed. And the Prophet clearly mentioned combination of sale and loan, okay? Because they are contradictory each other and they lead to consume the riba ultimately, okay? So this is the... Uh, concept principles and also we discuss the parameters uh, sharia control of the audit on the issue now we will um, provide some examples of valid combination and examples of invalid combination okay the first one example of invalid combination for example combination of loan and partnership okay combination of loan and partnership this is invalid it is as if, uh, okay, I am giving you this amount. 
as my partnership contribution. So if the business makes profit, okay, so I will get the profit. But if business uh, incurred the loss, then uh, my amount will be no more considered as partnership. It will be considered the loan. Then you have to pay back the principal. Okay. So uh, this is actually <laughs> uh, combining the loan and partnership to secure the amount, the principal amount. If the business makes profit, okay, fine. I am happy with the partnership. But if the business makes loss, Oh, I am no more with the partnership. This is actually I give you the loan. So since I'm, I give you the loan, at least you have to pay back the principal amount. So this, com this sort of combination um, is not allowed at all because it, it can lead to consume the riba and also it involves the other uncertainty. Okay. Combination of two cell in one deal or two agreements in one agreement. Uh, this is uh, actually in the current context, this could be referred to the Bayol Ina. Bayol Ina is actually sale and buyback agreement. Okay. Uh, I am selling you this asset um, on, on credit. And then provided that I will purchase back from you on cash so that you can get some cash. Right? And I can get some profit. Actually, I getting the, uh, the amount out of the loan. Actually, we want to make a loan, but since we cannot make the loan, so you, we are using an asset uh, and we are using the form of buy and sell to, to halalize, eh? to make the riba, uh, to legalize the extra amount. Not to legalize riba, but to legalize the extra amount. So this sort of combination, of course, um, uh, we have to note that uh, there are um, there is disagreement among the scholars regarding Bayul Ina, even though majority uh, says it is not allowed, but there is opinion also that um, it is permissible. So we have to see actually how it is practicing. If uh, it is practicing as a, as, a, as a pure and innocent sale contract, then okay, we could say never mind. But if it is used as a hila, then we have to be careful on that. Okay, so this could be an example of invalid combination. Another one: combination of rebate with early settlement. Okay, for example, um, uh, I am giving you, uh, for example, uh, in a loan contract, uh, if the loan amount is settled early, then uh, the borrower will be given the discount, which is called rebate. So if this rebate is actually comes uh, in a contractual form, then of course it will be uh, similar to the riba. Okay, so this is a combination. There is actually loan agreement and rebate. So this combination also invalid. Combination invalid. So there are many other examples also for invalid combination. What about the valid combination? A valid combination can be let's say the loan and hawala. The loan and hawala. For example, um, um, there are some securities in instrument or Islamic accepted bills. Yes, even though uh, it is also debatable, some say it, it used by Udain, selling the debt is itself controversial, but it's, it's still actually the financial institution provides loan facility through bill of exchange and then transfer this loan to the third party on discount basis. So actually, uh, these Islamic accepted bills is offering a loan, a loan, and at the same time transferring the loan from one party to another party, which is hawala. So there is no issue in this combination as far as the combination. Eh? I'm not talking about the from uh, Bayudain cons concern, but I'm uh, from the concern of combination. This combination is uh, no issue in this combination, All right? Combination of loan and modaraba. Combination of loan and modaraba. For example, um, in some jurisdiction, Islamic Bank received the current deposit based on Qardul Hassan. Okay, so this is loan. However, it may be stipulated if the depositor do not withdraw fund for a certain period, then they will deserve return from the uh, fourth month. 
it means then it will convert it to Mudaraba. So in one single agreement, uh, there is a combination of loan and Mudaraba. So this combination is valid. Combination of exchange and transfer of money. In the remittance service, we transfer money. At the same time, we exchange money. For example, um, uh, you send the Kuwaiti dinner, and in other countries, they will receive their respective currency. So it is transfer and also it is exchange. So this combination is OK. OK. So how to conclude? Um, as a conclusion, we have to understand that uh, the basic uh, principle in Muamalat is permissible. So we have to design our own contract. All right. We have, we, even though with combination, as long as there is no Sharia violation. And also, the Prophet mentioned Muslims, uh, al Muslimun al Ashurutihim. So we are free to put any condition as long as that condition does not violate any Sharia principles. So uh, as far as the combination also concerned, yes, we have to see the nature of combination. We have to see the nature of contracts, multiple contracts that has been combined. And also we have to see the outcome of the combination. So if in all these things, there is no violation, all right, uh, of Sharia contracts, then uh, the combination will be permissible. Otherwise, in case of any violation, the combination uh, will become invalid. So um, ultimately, the ruling of combination is subjective, eh? even though the basic principles is permissibility. All right. So I think um, that's all from my side. If there is any question or any comment, okay, uh, you are most welcome. So with that, I want to conclude here. Thank you very much for your attention. Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Muhammad Habib, uh, for this wonderful presentation. And alhamdulillah, uh, today a very important topic has been discussed and presented by Dr. Habib Rahman. And I think it's clear to us uh, the forms of combination of contracts in, in Islamic banking products and the ways of contracts, combination of contracts. And alhamdulillah, he explained the uh, scholars' arguments and the prophetic narration. And uh, it's also clear to us now the valid combination of contracts and which are uh, the invalid combination of contracts. So we thank you very much, uh, Dr. Habib, for your effort, for your this brilliant explanation and presentation of the uh, today's lecture. So now we open the floor for any a comment or any question uh, from the uh, participants. So we believe if you have any question or comment, please uh, you may write in the question box or you may raise your hand. If you have any confusion, uh, I think it's good chance uh, to know more about uh, the combination of contracts. There are, yes, uh, Mr. Amin Yaakov Abdullah. Thanks and appreciation to you, okay, Dr. Mahal, for providing us with these meaningful lectures. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amin. I'm pleased to put in your hands two questions. Which are the followers? Can Sharia supervisory bodies play a major role in product development? Yeah, Dr. Uh, Dr. Habib, I think you can see the question in question box. Uh, yes, thank you very much uh, for Mr. Amin Yaqub Abdullah uh, for this question. Can Sharia supervisory body play a major role in product development? Of course, why not? Sharia Supervisory Board, actually in Islamic financial institutions, Islamic banks, the function of Sharia Board, Sharia people in each and every department. They should be in each and every department. If you um, refer to the Sharia governance uh, model or Sharia governance framework, especially in the Malaysian one provided by Central Bank of Malaysia, you can see the Sharia function, Sharia people in the risk department, 
in the credit department uh, in the uh, audit department in the research so they should be everywhere so regarding the product development it's, uh, particularly of course when a product is designed uh, by the product development section uh, it will be submitted to the sharia people and they will see uh, they will see what because it's open right everything is permissible so they don't need to look for the dalil they don't need to look for evidence to make it halal because it's by default halal so they will see what they will see whether there is any issue there is any violation there is any prohibition or there is any sharia concern that need to be improved or need to explain further okay so they have they um they should actually they should not have only a simple role they should have a vital role because ultimately they are the one who will approve they are the one who will justify right um if if i refer to the malaysian practice it is very nice when any new issue or new product arises of course it, it must be approved by central sharia advisory council of bank negara malaysia so and immediately after approval they issue the resolution so in resolution they explain uh, what is the process of this approval and why they approve what is the sharia justification what is the what could be the sharia issue here and what is the answer so it is very much uh, i mean uh, very much good practice very good practice i really appreciate and any research for any student it is very helpful uh, to know and to update regarding the product new product or new issue or new service so i think the the sharia people should have a critical role vital role in product development or to settle any issue regarding the banking practice i hope it is clear understood thank you thank you thank you dr habib i think there is another question from uh, sister fatima انا اعتذر على عدم التفاعل والسبب هو انجليزيه ضعيفه ولكن اريد ان اسال المحاضر عن كفاءه العقود المركمه هل ضعفت بالضوابط الشرعيه ام زادت اوف كورس شكرا شكرا للسؤال اوف كورس بالاختصار ساقول زادت طبعا زادت الشرعيه دائما هنا للزياده ليس للنقص الشريعه دائما هنا دائما للمصلحه المصلحه المباحه اوكي okay. الشريعه so خاصه في المعاملات الشريعه دائما ايجابي ايجابي ها في في الجانب الايجابي بيكوز الاصل في الاشياء الاباحه اوكي ان هناك مقوله مشهوره من امام ابن القيم هي سيز كلما وضعت المصلحه فسمى شرع الله او كلما وجدت المصلحه فسمى شرع الله سو so, ما دام هناك مصلحه مباحه right? يعني غير متضاده للشريعه الشريعه هناك سو so, طبعا بالفعل زادت كفاءه الوقود المركبه زادت شكرا دكتور اني مور كويشن I think Sister Fatima would like to uh, talk. Uh, yes, uh, Sister Fatima. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Shukran ala kul ma tabdulunah. Shukran al muhadir. Walakin Sayyidi al-Kareem, uridu su'al an tariqat hisab hadhi al-kafaa. Mathalan, lau kan, lau nahsab kafaaat aqd al-ijara, hal yunkun lal-barahna او هل هناك مقالات علميه تبرهن على ان هذا العقد له كفاءه اعلى من كفاءه الليزينج الايجار التقليدي والحال ان نسبه نسبه العقود في الايجار سواء كانت منتهيه بالتمليك او مع خيار التمليك في صورها المتعدده النسبه ضئيله مقارنه بالليزينج وخاصه في بعض الدول التي فيها الماليه الاسلاميه غير مؤطره بالقانون وبارك الله فيكم مسابقا دكتور حبيب is it clear to you the question so هل يسمعني نعم نعم سامع 
يعني تريد تقصد يعني خاصة في جانب الحساب يعني accounting side exactement pour if you understand French I can speak slowly but 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 English is my my I have a little English أقصد سيد الكريم هل هناك مقالات أنا أنا في صدد البحث في مذكرة بحث ماجستير ولم أجد مقالات تحسب كفاءة الإجارة المنتهية بالتمليك أو مع خيار التمليك في صورها المختلفة أبحث عن طريقة حساب هذه الكفاءة عندي فكرة معناه في في ذهني الفكرة هي أن أحسب إعادة دمج الأقساط في الاقتصاد في الحسابات البنكية خلينا نقوله وبالتالي في الاقتصاد يعني إعادة الدمج أريد قياسها أردت القياس ولكن لم أتمكن من معطيات على مستوى المحاولات اللي قمت بها أريد قياس هذه المردودية بهذه الطريقة إعادة رسكلة أقساط الإجارة المنتهية بالتمليك لم أجد مقال يتحدث بطريقة حسابية علمية عن هذه المردودية وعن هذه الكفاءة الاقتصادية إذا لديكم فكرة واضحة أو مقال ممكن إحالتي عليه فهمت شكرا 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 لك I think, uh, I think uh, for the accounting the first mm-hmm. point the first issue is actually the practice the accounting practice uh, most of the cases does not represent the actual Sharia principle or Sharia practice there is a, still a gap between uh, the Sharia concept or Sharia principles and the accounting or reporting practice and uh, some people is still they follow ifrs eh? in some countries they have to follow ifrs uh, and um, some they follow others uh, maybe I, i could suggest you uh, to go through the accounting standard of aof i believe you already checked all this right the ma'ayir ash-shari'a li aof ala al-muhasabat so maybe um, you may find something in in their standards I think LFA standards will be very much helpful for you to figure out what you are looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu feek. Okay, doctor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any more question? Ethica Institute. Uh, Mr. Ismail asked about Ethica Institute, I think, in his country, Bangladesh. Do you have any idea, Dr. Habib? Uh, I don't have actually um, very much clear idea on that. And I think also this is not the place to talk about yeah. any institution particularly. But this is as far as I know, based on uh, any Middle East countries, uh, the Ethica Institute. But whatever, uh, they are reliable as far as I know. They are reliable. They provide the training, research, and um, professional or academic credential, academic degrees uh, on, on Islamic finance. So. If anyone interested can can join with them, no problem. As far as I concerned. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any more questions or comment? We're still waiting for uh, any more question or comment or any clarification. If you have any confusion about uh, the uh, combination of contracts. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we, Oneke uh, Maruf, okay. Uh, Mr. Oneke Maruf raised hand. Uh, yes, Mr. Oneke Maruf, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. I'm Abdul Aziz Oneke Maruf from Nigeria. I'm Hello, a student Salam. of Islamic finance in Malaysia. I appreciate what our lecturer has done today, and I want to appreciate. Now the lectures are Islami for what you are doing for Islam. This lecture today has been an eye-opener. You have been able to explain to us the condition under which you can combine contracts. I want to say Jazakum Allah Khaira to the organizer 
جزاكم الله خير اتو سبيكر جزاكم الله خير اتو تو اول اوف يو بارك الله فيك استاذ عبد العزيز شكرا حياكم الله جزاكم الله خيرا مستر شهراوي بليز يس السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله يس بليز Thank you, brother, and uh, my thanks also extended to the lecturer. I want to ask uh, about this al ijar al muntahiya bit the Malaysians, the Malaysian experience consider this as a combined uh, contract, but in the Gulf countries and the, the Arab countries as a whole, consider this bi'atan fi bi'ah. I want to know exactly how he solved this problem. I think the, the Malaysian experience is amazing, but I need some scientific approach how they solve the problem. They overtake the, this, uh, this uh, crucial issue, especially, for, for example, in Algeria, we are sometimes asked by the people, is this halal or not? According to the Malaysian experience, is halal. According to the Gulf experience, is not halal. I know. I, I, I want to know scientifically how the approach, whether he took in the comparative fiqh or uh, solved in the other al al fasida and and we keep quiet. We have to look for another solution. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, should I answer? Uh, yes, please. Yes, Dr. Habib. Yeah, I think Thank you can just the uh, sample or the nature of uh, Malaysian practice. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shaharawi, for this uh, question. Uh, actually, for me, um, there is no issue for Ijara Montahia with Tamli. For example, uh, we are talking about the combination of multiple contracts, right? So, Ijara Montahia with Tamli, uh, how many contracts here? Ijara Montahia with Tamli. Uh, it will start pure ijara. Bank will uh, will possess or will acquire the asset, and bank will lease the asset to the client. Okay, so the agreement between the bank and client is first of all the ijara contract, lease contract. Okay, and then uh, the client will pay the lease, the rental amount. Okay, uh, and with this rental amount, uh, some there yes. Uh, can be a many practice, no problem. Uh, the bank can calculate in the rental amount also the amount of acquiring the partnership, the portion of the ownership in the asset. For example, if the asset is uh, simple 1000, so uh, and there is 100 in installment, so bank will add another $10 with the rental. So after paying all the installments, the client automatically will get the ownership of the asset. So this could be one way because Ijara Montahia with Tamli, Ijara, this will be ended to transfer the ownership. So the practice is different actually, the way of transferring the ownership. So in Malaysia, they call it Aitab, Ijara Summa Al Bayr. So they use only the sale contract. So they use only two contracts, start with Ijara, and then finish or transfer the ownership of the asset with sale. This sale also, what will be the price? The price can be just token price, $1, can be the last few installments. Let's say the last five installments, they agree that it will be considered the price. So once you pay the last five installments, you become the owner, okay? So in Malaysia, they just use the sale contract to as a mood of transferring the ownership. But in, in Gulf countries or in Middle East countries, as far as I know, they, they use some other methods or some other way. Um, sometimes they did not make it clear. Mean, mean it's up to the client. It can be the sale contract. It can be the gift. Okay. Or it can be automatically after paying all the installments, automatically the things will be belong to the client. 
so there is no actually no very much difference between uh, malaysia and gulf countries or middle east countries uh, in ijara muntahia with family just because malaysia wants to everything different so they choose only the sale contract and they name it differently they name it aita ijara summa albai it means they they just pick up the one mode which is the sale sale mode to transfer the ownership but in gulf they put it open Uh, any mood any bank can use to transfer the ownership so i think as per its combination uh, as our topic today uh, there is no issue whether in malaysia whether in middle east i don't know if there is any other issue that could be uh, another further discussion but as far as combination i don't see any any issue or any sharia uh, uh, objection uh, from the combination perspective all right I think. Mullah uh, Khairan, Doctor Habib. Uh, any more last question or last comment? We otherwise uh, it's already time to conclude the session. Uh, okay, thank you very much. We would like to thank all participants from around the globe uh, for joining us in this uh, important lecture. And for your information, our uh, lecture is already recorded in our YouTube channel. Uh, in Arabic, Nadil Kasad Distami, and also you may find uh, our details and information of the lectures and all the programs of Nadil Kasad Distami in Facebook group, Facebook page, uh, in Arabic as well, Nadil Kasad Distami. And uh, one brother asked, uh, uh, "What about other courses of about Islamic banking?" Yes, we do have uh, programs and lectures. Uh, on every thursday every thursday uh, at the same time uh, in, in english language we do also have everyday programs in arabic language so you may refer to our uh, facebook page or twitter or our uh, website uh, sharia.org and you will find their details information about our activities and programs so we thank you very much and we thank our staff and uh, lecturers moderators admin of nadil iqtisad istami especially our dr ala lorbeet director general of nadil iqtisad istami and do we uh, thank uh, our uh, dr habib rahman for uh, your effort and for your time may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant your effort and this time and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you Uh, here and hereafter. Um, with that, inshallah, we conclude. If you have Dr. Habib, any uh, concluding remark, uh, please. Okay, shukran. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, congratulate for all the participants, and uh, I want to appreciate your time, your effort, and thank you for being with us and for being participating in the session. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept our effort. Uh, just, I actually, I would like uh, the objective is today actually just to uh, introduce this issue and to uh, to introduce some fundamentals of the issue. Right? If you can understand the issue of combination, you can investigate any of the products, any of the practice in Islamic banks. For example, I want to investigate the Ijara Mudda Ijabi Tamli. from the combination uh, from the notion of combination okay so i believe uh, we could be able to share some thoughts may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it and bless in our time and efforts and last but not least actually i have to appreciate i, I and i have to acknowledge the efforts of nadil iqtisad al islami and i always uh, appreciate i always pray for nadil iqtisad al islami for its uh, leaders directors moderators and all the uh, personnel who involved because this is actually very good effort and uh, this is actually uh, as a neema for us and maybe sometime we recognize the neema after it has been lost so uh, this is very much a real effort and all the lectures all the academic materials are available on the youtube i myself also sometime follow the nadi lectures uh, lectures and recording because it is very much beneficial for everyone for all the educators researchers so uh, i think and i pray for nadir ekhtisad islami for his all the family members 
may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this platform. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this effort as a way of um, becoming successful in the hereafter as well. So with that, I want to conclude my remark here. Thank you very much again. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran lakum. Jazakumullah khairan. Kataballah ajrakum. Dr. Anal Fadil. Dr. Muhammad Habib. Uh, Brother Mosibo, yeah, you may email to Dr. Habib uh, in the slides. On the last page of the slide, you will find his email ID. So you may email to Dr. Habib and he will respond to you, inshallah. So with that, uh, see you soon in other sessions, in other lectures in future, inshallah. Uh, we conclude today's session here. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran lakum. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu alaikum. Hiyakumullah.